Growing up as an Asian kid, on a personal note, I am encouraged to pursue TLC. Now, TLC is not table, ladder, or chair, but you know, technology, law, calculation-related career, which are perceived as uh, stable jobs. But today's episode will be a twist uh, because I would like to introduce you, Daphne Xiao, mural artist slash designer slash creator, to share with us her story on how to make money through art. Welcome to the show, Daphne. Hi, hi. Hello, it's so <laughs> great to have you here. You know, before we, we begin, uh, I just want to highlight you know, your work. Uh, she actually drew a portrait for Sarah Governor, Tuan Yang Terutama, uh, Abdul Tariq Mahmood, and also went to Nas Daily's office to draw the morale there in Singapore. Wow, so, so interesting. Uh. You know, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. How, how was the experience there? Super going cool. You get to see that famous person and like how he became so successful. It's quite interesting. And of course, his energy and his whole team's energy is really something, really something to learn from, I think. Yeah, because every time we watch mm. his Facebook, he, he's like, after he explained everything, he's like, that's one minute, you know, that kind of thing. Then suddenly, wow, you get to meet these kind yeah. of people. Cool. So cool, yeah. man. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, <very> so, cool. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah. Today, you know, uh, we want to talk about your work here and there. But first things first, mm. how, how, how was your, uh, I mean, I'll begin with my first question. How was your family's reaction that time when you were pursuing this creative direction to make a living? Okay. Um, I think it's okay because I just did it first. I didn't tell them. So a lot mm. of things in life I just do first and then show them later. So um, by the time they knew that I did artwork already for a living, they were like, okay cool it works because <laughs> they are also traditional like typical asian parents they like, get a business degree a recognizable degree or all the tlc right <laughs> but yeah um initially of course when we were picking our uh, degree they of course said this de uh, design doesn't really work la. it doesn't really earn you money but you know i just did it first and then and then later just show them and so they are okay. <laughs> I didn't tell them first. Wow. That's why I guess it was okay. <laughs> but last time when you yeah. were doing this, it, it was like a hustle income. Lah. Maybe you were doing it after your working hours. Uh, then, you know, oh. it, it took some time, right? How long was it? I mean, you were okay. previously working, working first. Uh, you got a, a stable yes. job. Then, you know, you were doing this as a second it's not really a job, like, I think it's a, something hobby for you, like, right? Yeah, so off back then, because um, I studied marketing, so I, I, met, I was in an archive firm doing the business mm. side of things. And then, um, of course, exposed to architecture, there are also designers, like, so um, they're very nice and supportive. So from then, I just did more artwork, and then they taught me some stuff, some software and some principles and stuff. So then, I, um, and they also introduced me people to like, Mm, to paint for. I think that's mm. when I started to just slowly accept commissions. Um, yes, back then I was working two jobs, did the day job and then did the night job and the weekend and the holiday job. So I think for about two years, it was nonstop working. Wow. <laughs> um, and at that time, I felt like it, it wasn't just a hobby though. Um, every, every job was actually serious that like I didn't do for free, for fun. Mm, mm. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, cause it's so tiring anyway. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It, it worked even though it was really tiring, yeah. Hmm. Wow. So, you know, yeah. um, all these things that you have been doing, uh, back then you were mostly drawing using manually or you also tried the digital part of it? Uh, um, both, um, because I learned the digital software, the whole Adobe suite when I was working with the architects. And then hmm. I just practiced on my own. Um, of course, I started out traditional, of course. So I've been drawing my whole life, hand drawing, painting. Uh, hmm. And then, yeah, learning the software was really, really, really useful. So it, it, we use both of it, even with murals, right? Murals, you think it's like just hand draw, but no, um, we actually Photoshop it first, digitally adjust, adjust it a bit. <laughs> and hmm. then we have the final copy, then we, then we put it on the wall. So it's all used, um, but we do do uh, purely traditional and purely digital art as well. What was your favorite drawing? Do you have a signature style of doing your drawing? I think if you look at my Instagram account, it's really random. There is, mm -hmm. I don't think there's a real signature style, but I think the early murals, they have a bit more um, style, which is like the Fist and Furious one, right? It's more line art, because mm. at that time, that was how I thought I should draw a portrait, because 
I don't know. I did that, at that time, I didn't want to do a typical uh, painting. So I just did it with like a, like how you would sketch on a book. I sketch it on the wall. So yeah. that one, I, I think that was my favorite, most unique piece. Apart from that is this painting here at the back here with the eye. <laughs> that one yep. is still not completed yet. But yeah, I think these two should be my favorites. Wow. Okay. So, you know, now this online platform such as Fiverr, Fiverr, F-I-V-R, it's something that uh, people can get commissioning from there. Have you ever tried anything like that? Mm, I actually never. <laughs> there are a lot of platforms out there, um, but I'm mm. lucky enough to not have to use them yet. I don't know too much about it because I don't use it, but from what I hear my friends say, commission work is uh, like word of mouth or directly commissioning from them works better mm. than being on the platforms, apparently. So it's it's more of like uh, your method maybe is more of a word of mouth from people after they saw your work and mm. people inquire and then that's how they find out to know more how they can work with you, right? Um, word of mouth definitely helped a lot in the beginning. Uh, but mm. after that, like recently, it's all been Google, Facebook, Instagram. I think posting your work online really helps a lot. Uh. Um, and then sometimes doing Google ads or uh, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, they all help. So how do you try? How do you guys transform from back in two thousand and thirteen when you were alone and slowly building up to where you are today? Mm, um, it was a interesting journey. Uh, actually, actually back then when I drew, I always I always have a friend with me Because mm. one, I'm very insecure because I'm like a tiny girl on a big big street with random people walking around. I get a bit a bit nervous. <laughs> so I always mm. have a friend with me, and I always tell the friend like how to add here, add there. And then eventually I found out, hey, actually they can just do some base paint work. Then from there, I uh, started to have assistance. No? From the years or so, I learned how to paint a bit faster and how to delegate work. So hmm, it has changed a bit. And that is how it changed, just slowly figuring out <laughs> along the way. You know, along this way, it's not just about the creative part of it, right? So you need to do, you need to pick up uh, more about the people management, communication, uh, accounts mm. and basic accounting this and that. How, how was mm. it for you? Okay, so because I took a uh, bachelor's in commerce, so um, um, accounting, a we did a bit of accounting, so that wasn't too crazy. I can mm. do a simple cash book <laughs> in outs, so I'm still able to report my taxes. So, <laughs> um, But I do think it's very important to know a bit of business if you're doing art, because even art is a business, especially if you're going to do it by yourself and not through an agency. So you have to know how to calculate your ins, your outs, and pay yourself a certain salary so you do not over overspend on yourself or on the company some admin some accounting some marketing is useful as well you have to go you got to know how to talk about yourself which took me some time to learn but yeah mm. do you also need to pitch your ideas to people or how how do they find out about your uh work and check out whether or not or they want to engage you and before they continue to have more conversation with you mm. um uh, I believe in process. Lah. So um, when I was in the in the in working for companies, I also did a bit yeah. of administration. So that's when I know we have to have um, proposals, proper contracts to sign. Mm. So um, before every job, we have to sign off. But um, before that, also we do talk. Of, the clients would look for us and then would look for me and say, um, "I want something like this." They either have a design or they don't. And so we propose, and then that process is. I kind of understand what you want. This is what we can give mm. you. This is the price mm. range. Is that okay? Okay, sign off. Then uh, we get the job done. So there's a whole process. <laughs> mm. So it's like uh, also there's an ongoing communication going on so that they, you can understand what they want. At the same time, they also can give you more feedback and mm. all this and that before you, you customize something for them uh, based on yeah. the price. Yeah, mm. I think we are, we are more designed than art. Uh, more designers than artists because I think we solve their creative problem instead of just like draw whatever. So mm. I, think that, I think that's why our artwork is also so random. There's so many styles because um, different people need different styles. Do you mind if we ask uh, actually the range that probably you can make uh, every month? Like is it like three, four or five figures that kind of thing? Or, or is it mm. consistent or it is not consistent mm. every month? Like every business, it's not consistent unless mm. uh, you do a retainer, but with art, it's a bit harder. Um, mm. So, yep, it can range from um, no, seldom three digits because you have to survive, right? So, yeah. <laughs> it, it can go from four to five digits so far. Like. 
um, mm. yeah, depending on the size, depending on the client. When you first started, right, you were drawing Marilyn Monroe for your friend? Yes. Or did the story, story continue from there? I think that friend kind of gave me my first wall. It just convinced me, you know, sometimes you have those friends that say, um, I, where you say, I don't know how to do this. Then your friend says, you can do it. I know you can. Then that kind of friend helps you start your first thing. Uh. So yes, um, that was sort of my first painting on the wall and happened to be a portrait and people are always quite interested in portraits. So from mm. there, there was like a portfolio already, the first one. And people were like, okay, you can actually do it on the wall. There's a real wall there in a real house. <laughs> so now you can paint more. Like They'll ask you to start to uh, quote for different kind of jobs. Uh. I think I'm also lucky that back then there were not a lot of um, mural artists, especially here in Kuching. Yep. Wow, mm. but your your drawings definitely left a mark here, and I think over time, you know, people will see and say, "Wow, that is someone who is mm. local who did this," and you know, it kind of make us proud, like as a Sarah of Kenya, to have your work around for people, the tourists to come and see and watch. So, all right, after this, I'll be asking Daphne more interesting question. We'll be right back after the break. So, and we're back here with Daphne, uh, our expert of the day to talk about making money through art. So Daphne, I'm sure throughout your journey about, you know, six years, seven years, you have faced a lot of challenges to do what you do. It's not just about something you love, but you know, there's ups and downs like, throughout the journey. Can you share with us some of the challenges that you face? <laughs> uh, it's so funny because there's so many types of challenges from so many angles. Apart from, of course, the job, which is the design challenge. Of course, sometimes you have people, sometimes you have material, and then sometimes you have a pandemic. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah I, I, to be honest, I cannot really pinpoint a specific very bad challenge, but there are just times when um, you just feel really tired because you have to rush everything or mm if something goes wrong, like a material doesn't work and then you have to redo the whole thing and probably not earn from that project. Okay, those are some challenges, but I feel mm, as long as you solve it, they will pass and then you forget about it. Like like now, I cannot really remember. But yeah, there, there are definitely different kinds of challenges. Is there a time that maybe you draw and then you accidentally, uh, you know, make, make a mistake to use the wrong color or something? Were you able to rectify it mm. on the spot or you might have to... You know, cancel the whole thing and restart again. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. So depending on the job. So uh, for walls, because we are using water-based paint for most walls, it's perfectly fine. Because any problem you have, just like painting, you can always uh, cover it with another layer of paint and keep going. Um, some material you cannot, like maybe metal or plastics, they're a bit more challenging because they require different preparation. Um, there was one time we were working on a different kind of material. It's like a bit of, is it, it's either MDF or plastic. I cannot remember. Oh, it's solid surface kind of, kind of material. So water-based paint just doesn't work on it. And then mm. of course we can just give the client the, the product, um, how we do it. Cause initially we thought that it can, it can absorb the paint that we're using. Uh, Cause we kind of told the contractor we're going to use this specific paint, but then came out that, that surface cannot use that paint so mm. that one we had to redo the whole thing um thankfully the client was uh, not in a rush so we just redid the whole thing and probably didn't earn from that one but we all learn from mistakes <laughs> so um next time if i ever have this kind of problem i know how to solve it <laughs> yeah uh, you know at least this kind of things right you do it the mistakes you do when you were younger then you grow from it you know you know that oh why you shouldn't and you wouldn't do that do it that way anymore because you learn from that mistake, right? I think they will and, never stop being mistakes, man. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure yeah, we're gonna definitely, make definitely. along the way. <laughs> I, I think it's fine because that's how you grow and become expert from it. Then mm. you know, one day when you have your own students that you are teaching them, you you know you can share them a very practical sort of experience. Mm. So mm. I wonder how about your friends' reaction among among you when they found out that, hey, Daphne, you seriously are going to full-time drawing morales, this and that. What was their reaction? Um, they were mostly very supportive. They were all like, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> they all say, it's cool. And then they will introduce me, their friends and their family mm. and, and people they know. Whenever they, people need an art job, they will straight away say, tell me or tag me on Facebook and stuff like that. So uh, friends were all very supportive. Uh, I don't have a single friend that says, 
that's bad. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> they did so that, nice. they're not my friend. <laughs> wow. Okay, can can cancel them off already from the list. Uh, this person is not bad. <laughs> well, uh, luckily, luckily, my friend quality oak pretty good so, so far. <laughs> yeah. Now I think your friends watching this also will be like, oh wow, now definitely talking so nice of <laughs> for me. <laughs> they will enjoy you my fun already, are they? <laughs> so, so you know the moral that you draw um is there any story behind it or mostly from your clients this and that have you mm. found anything that is memorable that you can share with us oh the uh, every i think every artwork has their own story um mm. every client that is willing to pay for the art has their own reason to want an art um mm. there are many lah, but i guess the the more uh, emotional ones would be those for their family. Um, for example, Black Jam, right? They painted their late mother on the wall. That was quite touching. And then wow. there's also, um, um, uh, okay, we did uh, South General Hospital, right? At the cancer ward. So mm. um, even though the painting doesn't completely show a story, but um, behind it is that the painting is supposed to be very cheerful so that people who are waiting at the cancer ward would have something to see. And uh, cancer is a uh, something quite personal to me so i felt quite happy about that so i think um every artwork definitely has their own story just to different people so you were out there in the market to solve problems whereby you know creating something artistic something that people would uh watch and then you know admire the beauty of it like, out there so what sort of uh inspiration that you got to keep you uh creatively running you know do you have do you read any books or online sites that you check out mm -hmm. just to keep your creative juice running instagram and pinterest i think these two are one of the most inspiring places people mm -hmm. share their work um and, and i think I, every single designer i know actually uses pinterest <laughs> so um that really ins inspires you as well like wow how could these people think of such genius so then you kind of want to do something like that or better or something different online sites yes i, I sometimes browse sites like my modern mat so you see different type of art from different places around the world uh, that's mm. quite fun youtube videos i think actually not not only art related stuff sometimes when it's related to even um video or even business they can inspire you as well so um, sometimes in business they think about the big idea of something so it kind of translates to what creative work we do like mm. Mm, maybe we don't just want to paint this simple thing maybe we sometimes go to the client and say if we paint this more people would like it, <laughs> something like that, you know. Um, yeah, different different ways to be inspired, not just purely in fine art. Is there any artist in particular that you are watching uh, to follow, or or like you're just going random only? <laughs> Pretty random. I don't think Pretty I'm following random. any specific artist. Yeah, I think everybody's style is so cool. So yep. I like to either merge them together, or yeah, refer to them. <laughs> <laughs> so are you someone who is like uh, more to self-taught or you have a, a seafood behind to actually uh, guide you to do all these things or you're, mm. you're experimenting yourself? Uh, I am experimenting myself. La. Maybe when I was in kindergarten, I went to some art classes. Mm. Uh, apart from that, I just always drew. Like when I'm young, I'm supposed to do my homework. I'll be drawing underneath my homework. And then when my mom comes, I'll like, cover, the, <laughs> cover my artwork and just pretend to do homework. <laughs> that kind of. So uh, yeah, I've been drawing my whole life. So I can say um, I'm quite self-taught and I like to experiment with different mediums as well. Uh, so when I started to get a job and earn some money, right, I would buy all these expensive uh, color pencils, like 200, 400 bucks a box kind of color pencils kind. Um, mm. I buy every single kind of paint that I can get my hands on and then try and test and learn different mediums. Uh. But you were like, of course, you, you were trying it out and then you make money out of it. Then that's where you, you were willing to spend mon more money to, you know, to get a better equipment, this and that, to test it out, right? Yeah. In the beginning, no, though. In the beginning, I was just doing it as a hobby for, for myself mm. before people ever asked me to draw stuff. I just wanted to experiment with everything already. Actually, the funny thing is when we have more jobs, I'd have less time to experiment <laughs> and, and do personal art now. <laughs> Oh. Um, but along the way, we do learn. I do learn things that are needed to improve. Mm. But yeah, maybe less time to do something completely different. There are other skills la, like video editing, la, um, these kind of things then uh, came along the way as well to enhance um, our work. Oh, speaking about that, you know, uh, did you guys go into a digitalization, like to put it in YouTube so that maybe you can monetize out of it? So I've always put my stuff on social media, right? Uh, Facebook, 
initially and then Instagram came and then we put it on Instagram. And then, yeah, YouTube came along. And of course, I'm like, wow, YouTube, if I get a certain number of followers, I can get some income. <laughs> so yes, I started a YouTube channel uh, in 2016. And uh, it started off a bit travel, but after that, uh, I did document a lot of our artwork on video. Mm. Back then, when they only needed 100 subscribers, then we did earn some money. <laughs> but then now, then you need about, I think, 1,000 followers before you can get any Google money. So hopefully one day, <laughs> we'll get no. there. <laughs> so, so for your audience out there who are wondering, uh, YouTube, yeah, you can make money by having like 1,000 subscribers and also 4,000 watching hours for the past one year. So don't worry, I think uh, 4,000 4, uh, watched hours. Yep. Okay. Because I'm also, by the way, Bujang and Broke is also in YouTube, so <laughs> I've always hey! been cooking. <laughs> How come many followers now? <laughs> I got like, I don't know, 1,400. Ah, you're earning money already. Uh, no, not really, because my watch hour is just 2,100, I think. So I got another 2,000 to go. We should but collab. It's, <laughs> yeah, but, but it's too much about uh, investing things. Uh, so it, I don't know, people are interested. So I just make it very basic for people to watch. Hmm. Mm. So anyways, mm. uh, let's go for a short break first. Uh, before we wrap up this discussion today, stay tuned, don't go away. Alright, we're back with me, Ryan, your host for Bujang and Broke. So final question of the day, Daphne, uh, what advice would you like to share with our audience today if they want to pursue art as a career? I would say, keep, just do it. Um, mm. Be responsible. Finish what you say you will start to do. Um, if the client is unhappy, be open-minded about it. Try mm. to, well, in the end, you're doing a job for them. So try to make them happy by um, painting like improving what you're doing. I think it's important to stay humble as well. Um, try not to think that, oh, okay, I'm the artist, I know the best. <laughs> um, we, we all have to learn. I don't think we are the best all the time. We have to, everybody's situation is a bit different, so we kind of have to cater to people sometimes. Uh. Um, mm. Of course, unless you really know that this is, your, this is how you should do it, then of course, then you can stand your ground. Uh, but try to be nice about it, I think, as, a, as any job, actually. Just try to be nice. <laughs> um, I think collaborating is also very important. Um, so be nice to not only your customers, but also your peers or people who do similar or different things from you. Um, you don't know how much they can help you in every way. I have so many, so much help from different kind of friends in different fields that even last daily job, okay, my friend who happened to be working in furniture and interior design introduced me to that job. So I'm like, wow. Wow. Yeah, so it's so crazy how if your niceness goes a long way. Um, mm. Of course, when it help, you help back. And then like, yeah, I think that's that's the kind of advice I think to 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 even do any business, I feel. But of course, just be careful as well. <laughs> but, awesome, Daphne. You know, thank you so much for being here today. We learn uh, a, a lot from you when it comes to networking with people. You know, when um, it comes to juggling our work, you know, don't give up to uh, on our dream because not maybe the first choice that we want in life is not there yet. But you know, we can still keep working on it until one day uh, we can try it out here and there. And finally, whatever that you pursue in life, probably you can do it one day as your main job. So. Mm -hmm. You know, the show has come to an end, but we will see you in the next episode to talk about Can I Retire Early and Rich? And all this is brought to you by TVS. I'm Ryan, your host from Wujang and Broke. See you next time. Bye.